Okay, I'm giving you guys a little home tour today because so many people have been in our messages in the inbox and in the DMs asking about personal care products and what's non-toxic, how do I know? So we're gonna go through some of the products that I use. None of this is a paid ad, none of this is like not authentic. Um, I just want you guys to know what I'm using and kind of how I got to this place where I feel like 90 to 95% of the stuff that we use in our house is non-toxic. And the whole journey for me started when I got pregnant with our first son, West, because I was like, I'm growing this other human inside of me and I just want him to have all the advantages and be as healthy as possible. I don't know why I didn't do that for myself at first, but um, I went through the whole process and when I was going through it, I really overwhelmed myself. I really got to the point where I was like trying to do it all, all at once. And I, personal care products, my makeup, my home care products, my kitchen cookware, like I was trying to overall haul everything and it was just too much. It was actually more stressful and thinking about it from that perspective, stress can overwhelm the body and then you end up having the negative impacts and inflammation from that. And so we don't wanna do that either. And so trying to go one thing at a time in your home, so like as you run out of things, replacing them with a, with a non-toxic option is truly my biggest recommendation. So let's start with the first thing that we all do when we wake up, we brush our teeth. So my go-to toothpaste is David's. I have been using this for years. David's is a whitening toothpaste. They are no sulfates, no fluoride. And so you, most of the toothpastes that paste that you see out, Crest, Colgate, those toothpastes, they have what's called sodium lauryl sulfate, which is what makes your toothpaste foam. Um, and I know it feels weird getting used to it, but I promise your teeth are still getting clean when you use a non-toxic toothpaste. And honestly, in my opinion, this tastes better too. Um, so that's for toothpaste. You also want to look for floss that is like a coconut floss or something that doesn't have microplastics in it. That's a really important piece of the puzzle when it comes to your dental game. Now, when we move over to skincare, I love taking my makeup off with sea buckthorn oil. Um, that is like a really great cleanser and it literally is just an oil that cleanses, it removes makeup, it removes any of the gunk that's been on your face all day, any dirt, any debris, and it gets your face clean and it hydrates your skin favorite non-toxic skincare brands is a brand called Kipris. I love this brand. Um, back when I was actually a marketing director and I was running a spa, this was what I was stocking the spa with is Kipris. Um, all of their products are completely clean and non-toxic. Um, and so I have their morning antioxidant and their evening serum. I love their eye cream. I love their moisturizer. All of these things are really great. They also have this thousand roses oil that's really hydrating for the skin and brightening for the skin. Um, so that's one of my favorites when it comes to skincare products. Um, I'm looking for a mist that I use. I'm gonna find it for you guys because it's really good. I think it might be completely clean. It has things like aloe, it has things like, um, I'm trying to think of like vitamin E, like really, really clean, but also really hydrating. It's an accelerating um, hydration mist. Okay, so now let's talk about hair care because that also can be super toxic, um, especially when it comes to all the aerosols and the sprays and the cans. And so for the most part, what I use is a brand called Briogeo. I use their Lehman, conditioner, I use their blow dry protectant, I use their volume boosting because your girl's got fine hair, um, spray, and then I also use their shampoo and conditioner, that's what you'll find in my shower. So, hair care, skin care, let's try makeup. So, um, it's taken a while to get to this point and I will tell you guys right now, not 100% of the stuff, but 95% of the stuff in here is Clean. Kosas, it's one of my favorite brands. It's got such clean ingredients. Um, 
no parabens, no phthalates, none of that stuff. Um, and what does that mean? The shelf life is shorter, but I'm okay with that because I'm getting a new bottle of foundation typically every three months. I'm not letting it sit around um, in my you know, drawer for years. And so the concealer and the foundation, that's what I use. Say is also a really, really great brand. I use their cream bronzer and their cream, cream blush. Um, they're really my favorite when it comes to bronzer blush combos because I don't like powders. I really like all cream based products when it comes to my face um, because I feel like my face can start to look cakey when I use um, powders. The only powder I use is this Lawless. Again, another non toxic company. Seal the deal and I just lightly kind of go over my foundation and concealer with that to seal everything before I do the rest of my products. When it comes to lips, Natasha Denona, that is a really great one. I also really like, there's another one that I really love. Like I only love a nude lip pencil, you guys. Um, Tower 28, a really good one. The Charlotte Tilbury one is definitely not non-toxic. Um, but these two brands, are really great. We're gonna link all of this stuff for you guys out to in a shop. Um, okay, and then when it comes to mascara, I've been getting this question a lot actually. Rare Beauty is my mascara go-to. Say is what I usually use for a highlighter. Um, I also sometimes will use this one by Lys, L-Y-S. This is a female founded brand that is non-toxic, which I really, really like. Um, and then, Kosas does a good lip oil. What else can I show you guys in here? And then I use this like a million times a day. Summer Fridays, their lip balm is my favorite thing in the whole world. I'm gonna put some on right now. And again, a really good, clean beauty brand. Um, now, one of the things that you guys will find when you're looking at products, whether they're your home care products, so things that you're spraying on your counters or beauty products, lotions, is fragrance. You don't ever want to buy something with the word fragrance as an ingredient because it's a huge hormone disruptor. Now, there are plenty of clean perfume brands, clean lotion companies or companies that make lotions that are made with things like essential oils that are not toxic. And so my favorite of those is a brand called Ellis Brooklyn. They make my favorite perfumes. Um, I have like literally every scent. I haven't even put one on today. I love this B one. Um, I've been using these for years and it's like one of the only brands that I have found that does a non-toxic perfume. Um, so let's go, hmm, where should we go next? Let's go into the kitchen. I'll show you guys cookware because what you may not know is that the pans that you're cooking your food in can leach some of that nonstick and be toxic to you. So we'll talk about my favorite non-toxic cookware. Um, and then we'll go into the laundry room and do some of the non-toxic products. In okay, there. so some cookware is coated with what's called Teflon. And that, when heated, can contain things called PFOAs and PTFEs, which are toxins that can leach and create fumes when they're heated or leach into your food when heated. And it's, they're toxic for your body. And so, Hex Cloud is my go-to right now. I love these pans. They are definitely pricey, but they are also definitely worth it. Like they, nothing sticks to these pans, nothing. But there's no toxins. There's no Teflon or anything like that that's leaching into our food. Um, that also, and in here, in the back, our back kitchen, we also have uh, this, these big cover pop like pot cookers um, by Caraway. And I use these when I'm like cooking the dog's rice or I'm cooking like a big stew or something. And so Caraway is also non-toxic, all of the pots and pans. Um, when you are cleaning your fruits and vegetables too, let's talk about food. There's a lot of them, especially if they're not organic, are spraying all of these pesticides and herbicides. And so we want to make sure that we're cleaning our food. I like to rinse mine in white vinegar. 
um, or get a non-toxic cleaning solution to rinse your fruits and vegetables so that way you're not consuming any of that. And if you think about even eating organic, a lot of those pesticides and things spray over from the non-organic farm. And so you still, even if you're buying organic, wanna make sure you're really, really washing your fruits and vegetables well. Just generally for you guys that I want you to think about when you're thinking about removing and eliminating toxins. One is just read the labels. And if there are things on there that you can't pronounce or that are not recognizable, you're probably gonna wanna stay away from it. You can also use things like the Dirty app to scan barcodes and see is this clean? Is this dirty? The Environmental Working Group or the EWG also has a really great website with a really huge database so you can look things up and see is this clean? Is this not? Do I want to replace this? What is this on a scale of you know one to ten in terms of how good of a product it is? The next thing is you really want to start to reduce and eliminate plastics from your life. So if you are packing your lunch in plastic, if you are getting takeout and it comes in plastic and you're heating that in your microwave, if you're drinking out of plastic water bottles, all of those things are leaching chemicals, estrogen-like chemicals that are coming into your body, BPAs, that are disrupting your hormones on a micro level and it is adding up over time, building a toxic load. So get rid of plastics wherever you can. Drink from stainless steel, carry your lunch in a stainless steel container. Try to really do as much as you can in terms of eliminating plastics out of your life. From there, you want to think about if you're living at, like in a home, you want to definitely make sure that you are getting a water filter um, or ordering spring water that comes in a glass bottle. So we take the second option, we order spring water, it comes in a big glass jug and we use the dispenser in our back um, kitchen to get our water. If you don't want to take that option, put a filter in because the tap water, if you're drinking that, it has so many different chemicals and toxins, even things like birth control has been, like micro, micro amounts have been found in tap water. So stay, do your best to stay away from tap water. I like to live my life like I'm in a constant state of detox, eating like five to 10 different vegetables every single day, and vegetables and fruits. So getting a good amount of fiber, like 35 grams of fiber, constantly detoxing. I to use the sauna. I move my body every day. So I think about how I can assist my body in detoxing all the time, so I'm not building up that toxic load. Um, so I hope that this video was helpful. It gave you a few brands that you can really use and things that you can you know, bring into your life one at a time. And I hope that it also gave you some good general tips in terms of thinking about removing, eliminating toxins and endocrine disruptors, things that disrupt your hormones, especially if you're using them on a daily basis. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and follow us on YouTube, and I will see you next week.